this today. I want you to really get this. You are the one Jesus loves. Now, you need to really get that because it's easy to hear the word love or God loves the world. But sometimes it's difficult for us to process that he loves us. Because of all the things we may have done in the past, all the things we've done, the mistakes we've made, you may not be sure that God truly, truly loves you. And if you're that type of person that don't know whether God loves you, you're not alone. People have asked this and people have thought this numerous of times. Often it's because we have the wrong definition of love or we have the wrong kind of love that we're thinking about. There are several types of love. You know, phileo, that's where we get Philadelphia. That's a brotherly love, agape, unconditional love. But for the sake of time, I'm going to talk about two types of love today. And the first one is a love that loves because the object is valuable. Now, most of us know this love because how many of us love like certain cars? Because the object is valuable. It got the heated seats. You know, it drives by itself. It parks by itself. You know, the type of the color it is. And, you know, sometimes because of the value of how much it costs, oh, I love that. Or how about the purse, right? Some people can have a regular purse or you have a Louis Vuitton purse. And because it's Louis, oh, my God, because of the value of it, you love it. Or, or you know, or, or maybe, you know, um, there there's, you know, shoes that you like, those red bottoms, right? You know, or a certain makeup for, for ladies or, you know, because it has a brand and it's valuable, it seems as if often we love things more, you know, and that's a love, a love that loves because the object is valuable, because it, it costs a lot. But the problem with that, and I don't know if I'm alone here, but I can guess that I'm not, the problem with that is for me, I didn't always feel that valuable. When I look in the mirror, I didn't, I didn't, you know, th there's not times where I just look in the mirror and say, whoopee, wow, look how valuable you are. Who does that? In John 3.16, it tells us that God so loved the world, right, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so God, the God type of love is totally different because there's a love that loves because the object is valuable, because you've done something so valuable. You've done something so amazing because you're so valuable, you deserve to be loved. That, that's a type of love. That's a kind of love. And that's sometimes why we miss that God loves us. We miss it because you know, we may feel like we need to be performed, and that's what the world teaches, right? The higher the performance, the more you love, right? The more points you score, the more you get paid in the NBA. The better you pass the ball, the more you get paid, the more you run the ball, the more beautiful you are, the more, you know, you get paid for that movie. You know, and often what happens is when we, you and I, we're gauging love based on the value of the object, that's when we really have problems because when we look at ourselves, how about when we look at ourselves and we don't see that much value? How about when you see yourself and you miss the mark so many times? How many, how many times you've looked in the mirror and you have insecurities? You, you don't like certain things about you. You don't like the way you speak. You don't like your size. You don't like the way you, you, know, you, you feel about yourself. And so this is one reason why often we ask that question, why do you love me, God? We ask that question, why do you love me? Because we think of love as a love that loves because the object is valuable. And that is a type of love. That's a type of love. People use that love all the time. You know, say, I love that pizza, right? My God, because it's valuable. You're like, man, I just love it. How do they put that marinara sauce? That's just amazing. Man, that's good. Anybody have like a, 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 a type of food or, or, or a restaurant you like to go to because you love that restaurant. Why? 
because of what they sell, because the object is valuable, what they have to produce. Often we've pushed that in people's lives, starting as a kid. You know, I understand rewarding your child for doing great because you want to re- them to repeat it, but sometimes people feel less than or maybe not as loved as others because they didn't perform the way the other child performed. And it starts up real, it starts real young, starting to put that into the system of our children. If you perform this way, now you deserve to be loved. You deserve to be rewarded. And so it's so important for us to get this because this type of love is the love that many of us carry into a relationship with God. Many times we carry into a relationship with God and we have a false view of who God is based on that perception. We think that God loves us based on our value, how much we bring to the table. How many of you guys had a, a childhood toy or, or something that you really liked, right? You know, mo- most, of all, most of us had toys or little duckies, right, a little... Little, little rag dolls that we liked, right? I mean, we loved that rag doll. We drug it around everywhere with us. We took it around us. I, it reminds me <laughs> of, of someone. I, I remember, you know, uh, you know, always carrying around this, this rag doll, this ducky. I mean, it wasn't perfect. I mean, matter of fact, it started getting a little dirty, a little smelly. Little flawed, start getting holes in it, right? You start having to sew the holes up. Have you ever had like a, a little rag doll? Come on now, let's be real. You know, you, you had like a little toy or, or, you know, you had a little plane or something. After a while, you had that toy and, and you would have that toy and you'd throw it around and it would get dirty and nasty. It would start smelling, but guess what? You still loved that toy. It, it wasn't based on how valuable it was. It wasn't expensive. It wasn't even a collector item, right? You know they have those collector item toys? It wasn't even a collector item toy. It was just this toy that you actually loved. Remember, it started getting stinky, dirty, nasty. You were carrying it around. You just took it everywhere. And, and when you took that rag doll around, and matter of fact, if you even try to sell it at a, a, a junkyard or garage sale, probably get 25 percent. You may get 25 cents or something for it. You, you wouldn't get much. But I remember this young lady that reminded me of the love of God, a little kid that was in our church. I remember when she first started coming to our church, she was always carrying around a little ducky. And I would look at that ducky And I was like, wow, man, I mean, she loves that ducky. I mean, it wasn't a collector's item. Matter of fact, that ducky started getting nasty and dirty. She started started carrying it around. I mean, not not that it was just horrible, but it was like, man, this this duck has been through it. (laughs) This duck has been beat up a few times, dropped a few times, crushed a few times. This ducky has been beaten up. But I'm going to tell you, this little child carried this ducky around. And I mean, she loved this ducky. With all of her, no doubt, it was obvious. To me, hey, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like, why are you running around with this ducky? But you know what? That ducky was valuable to her. And it reminds me of how God's love is. Because it didn't matter how the ducky looked. It wasn't based on how the ducky looked. It it was not based on the value of the ducky. It wasn't even based on what somebody else said about the ducky. No, it didn't matter what someone else said. You know what? She loved that ducky because that ducky was her ducky. It was hers. And you may be saying today, well, I'm just a rag doll. I'm just a a ducky. Sometimes I feel like that ducky. Beat up, dropped, hurt. 
maybe even abused. And it's something about God's love, though, because God's love is not a love that loves because you're valuable. I want to talk about this other love. It's a love that loves and gives valuable. It gives value to the object. See, the, the second type of love I want you to get is it's a love that loves because the, you know, and gives value to the object. It's not that this ducky is valuable. Who gave value to the ducky was the person that loved it. The little child gave value because no one else cared. Like you might pass by someone and you look at him and you're like, ah, whatever. Or you may see their flaws and you start getting offended by their flaws, not even liking their flaws. But guess what? God actually loves that person. And the same thing with us. When you look in the mirror and you may have insecurities, you have flaws, you have issues, you have heart, heartaches, you have pain, you have a past. I mean, was, we all had a past. We all had something that took place in our life that we've done that we're not, you know, all proud of. We're ashamed of. We had some hurt, some abuse. We've had a lot of things happen in our life, but we're not loved because of what we've done. We're loved because God gives love and he gives value to us. We, we're not valued because of what we do. We're valuable because of how God sees us. Aren't you so happy that God sees you totally different than the way you see yourself? Aren't you so happy that God sees you different than the way you even feel you about yourself and the way others say things about you? Aren't you so happy that you're, the love that you have for yourself is not the same love that God has for you? Aren't you so grateful that God loves you and he adds value to you because of his love, not because of yours. See, I want to talk about and take some time about talking about a love that loves and gives value to the object. So if you're feeling like you don't have any value today, maybe you're looking at yourself through the wrong, wrong love lens. Maybe you're looking through the wrong love lens. Maybe you want to clean those lenses and say, you know what? And maybe if you see people wrong, oh, it happens to me as well. Because we're all human, right? And you start, you start seeing people wrong, and then you have to put on God's lens and say, you know what? You start seeing things wrong in life, and you have to, you have to put the love lens on and say, no, 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 no. Because God gives a love that loves, and he gives value to the object. He gives value to the person. A love that loves because the object is valuable, it just... It's rare because none of us, that's why we talk about the grace of God. None of us deserve God's love. None of us deserve anything. None of us because we're all born sinners. But thank God for his grace and his love because this is how God loves us. That while we were sinners, he still sent his son to die on the cross for you and I. We are these rag dolls. We are these little duckies with all kind of hurts, with all kind of hang-ups, hiccups, and habits, all of us. There's no human being, if you live, you know, past 21, actually but even before that, you have hurts. You have some hang-ups. You have some hiccups. You have some, some things that bang you up a little bit in life. Just like that ducky, I remember, that was dirty and beat up and, and, and had needed to get sewed up. So often, we begin to start thinking that that doesn't give us value anymore because we've been beat up. I've seen over and over in reels and television, a preacher or a minister pull out a $100 bill and he crumble it up, he throw it on the ground, he stomps on it. Rips it, tears it apart, and he puts some tape on it and says, how much is this worth? And the crowd says, $100, obviously. He said, it don't matter what they went through. It don't matter what this $100 bill went through, it don't change the value. That's how God sees it. No matter what you've been through, no matter how much hurt, no matter how much pain, no matter how much sorrow, no matter how much abuse, no matter how much you go through, it does not change the way God sees it. Because God's love, the love that loves and gives value to the object, it gives value to you and I. And yeah, you, you probably have some flaws, because we all do. You probably have some scars, because we all do. 
You probably have a lot of issues going on, some stuff that's hidden within. We all do. But I want to give you this. God doesn't love you because you're worthy. God love makes you worthy. God doesn't love you because you're worthy. And I mean, it took a while for me to grasp this. It took me some years for me to grasp this. I was trying to perform. I always trying to perform up to uh, certain people's standards. Now, I'm a big uh, component of, of exampleship. I believe exampleship is amazing. But I'm not going to try to live up to someone else's standards. Because guess what? God, uh, and to, in order to give myself value. Now, there's all good to make adjustments for relationships. That's amazing. You, we all supposed to make adjustments for relationships. But the reality is that does not change your value. You know, so you and I got to get this. God doesn't love you because you're worthy. Because none of us are worthy. We're all sinful. We're all sinners. We're born lost. We're born in darkness. We're born, born with a depraved condition. Romans chapter 5, verse 8 says, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, he didn't wait for us to get it cleaned up. While we were still sinners, he didn't wait for us to, you know, let go of our forgiveness, unforgiveness. While we were still sinners, he didn't, let us, he didn't wait for us to get it right, for uh, him to love us. He, he, he didn't wait for you to start getting all your things together. I thank God. Aren't you happy of God that loves us? And he didn't wait for us to get it together. It says God demonstrated his own love for us in this while we were still sinners. While, and you can fill in the blank, whatever sin you committed, whether it's murder, whether it's hatred, whether it's bitterness, whether it's strife, whether it's envy, whether it's jealousy, whether, whatever it may have been, while you and I were still sinners, Christ died for us. And that's the beauty of God's love. That's the beauty of how he loved us. He didn't wait for us to become valuable. He loved us so we would be valuable. This is the thing we need to get. I like this next scripture. It's from 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. And verse 9, it says this. God is love. So how, I mean, so it's a false love when I'm trying to love you based on you being valuable. That's a false love. Like if I'm putting that weight on you, that you got to be a certain way for me to love you, that's not God's love. Because God demonstrates his love while we were still what? Sinners. That's, so God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son, Jesus, into this world that he might live through him. He said, I want to demonstrate to you what love looks like. Verse 10 says it like this. He says this. This is love. Not that we loved God. Uh-oh. So we weren't even in a state where we could love God. So when we start bragging about how much we love God, it's really how much God loves you. That's what we're supposed to be bragging about. It's really how much God loves you. That's what really we're supposed to be bragging. And obviously, we get to a place where we can grow and develop and begin to love God. But it, it starts with understanding how much God loves you. And it gives you identity. It gives you purpose. It gives you value. You don't walk around in no pity parts. You don't walk around being a victim. You don't walk around pointing fingers at everybody else. You don't walk around blaming. Why? Because you know that God loves you. And as long as God loves me. It gives me value. I can walk around and strut my stuff. I can walk around, you know what I'm saying, with confidence that guess what? This too shall pass, no matter what it is. Why? Because God loves me. And as long as he loves me, as long as he loves me, I can endure whatever comes my way. As long as he loves me, I know you're here with me. I know you can be right with me, and I can be going through all time of chaos. But guess what? Because you love me. It's, your, it's God's love that anchor you. It's God's love that val gives you value. It's God's love that make you worthy. You don't make yourself worthy. I don't care how much you acquire, how many houses you buy, how many businesses you establish. I don't care how many things you do and accomplish here on earth. Until you understand, it's God's love. Amen. It's not because of what I do and how I live and how I act and how I talk. It's God's love that gives me 
stability here on earth when all hell was breaking loose all around me. It's God's love. And what you want to get is this. This is what I want you to get. This guy that wrote this, this is how you got to understand. John, he writes about love more than probably anybody. If you listen, if you read through 1 John, he's always talking about love. Oh, you, you, you know, matter of fact, you know what he called himself? He called himself self-proclaimed the disciple that Jesus loved. Now, I don't know who told him that. I don't know who told him that, but he got an understanding that I'm the one. But it didn't start off that way. You, you know what? It, you know him <laughs> and his brother. Look, watch this. You know what they called him? Sons of Thunder. Them boys, you know why they called him Sons of Thunder? It was people that were doing stuff wrong, and they were like, well, just call down fire from heaven, Jesus. Like, they were raw and uncut, rough. Probably, you know, in this day, they probably have a leather vest on and ride a Harley with tattoos on their neck or gold teeth or with pieces of, and chains swinging off their neck, jumping out of, you know, cars with, you know, that, that got tires about this tall, jumping out, you know. And this is the type of person they probably would be in this day and age. Sons of thunder. People that you would be wondering, like, are they, are they saved or what? And these are the type of people Jesus chose to hang out with. Now, they didn't stay that way because eventually, I don't know when it happened, but somewhere in there, they come to realize that I'm the disciple that Jesus loves. Instead of being a gangbanger, a thug, a hoolum, or a convict, or a prostitute, or, or a promiscuous woman, or abused woman living in her pain, or a man living in her past, guess what? He come to realize, I'm not a son of thunder. I am the disciple that Jesus loves. Somewhere in there, he ended up writing this letter and start talking about so much love because he had spent enough uninterrupted time in the presence of Jesus. So you got to find some time, some uninterrupted time in the presence of Jesus. So the un most of us have uninterrupted time scrolling on, you know, on social media. We spend an hour or two. Look at, look, look at you, how much time you put on that phone. They, they show you, they show you how much time you, you go scrolling. But what about uninterrupted time in the presence of God? Amen. How does that uninterrupted time? I'm going to sit here and I'm going to just hang out and I'm going to sit in your presence until I walk away and I don't have all this bitterness and strife. I know who I am. I'm not letting my situation dictate me. I'm not letting things bother me. Guess what? Because I am the disciple that Jesus loved. And since I'm the disciple Jesus loved, everything that's taking place in my life is here for a reason. Because I remember he loves me. And because he loves me, guess what? He gives me value. And because I got value, I can anchor myself and realize that guess what? This is happening for a reason. Why? Because guess what? I'm the disciple Jesus loves, so he must want to develop something in my life. He must want to change something in my life. He must want to deal with this attitude. He must want to deal with this mindset and this perspective I got. He must want to change something because I am. The disciple that Jesus loves. And he would not do anything to harm me. So anything that's taking place in my life is for me. It's a reason because, God, I am the disciple that Jesus loves. And there's nothing happening to me. It's nothing happening to me on accident. It's nothing taking place. These guys were called sons of thunder. Sons of thunder. These, these, these brothers around wanting to cast people into the eternal fire. But eventually, uninterrupted time in the presence of Jesus. Uninterrupted time in Jesus. That, that's why you, we shouldn't be tripping by prayer. We, sh we, we should want to call about time. We don't have time. We all got time. We all got the same 24 hours every day. And, and we need to carve out time to have uninterrupted time in the presence of Jesus. And maybe, just maybe, if we have uninterrupted time in the presence of Jesus, we'll begin to start seeing ourselves differently. No, 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 hold on. Not, not only will you see yourself differently, you'll see other people differently too. Why, 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 why will we see other people differently? Because the same grace that you want, you'll want to give to somebody else. 
the same grace you need, the same forgiveness you need, you'll distribute to other people because guess what? You understand that, guess what? I used to be a son of thunder, <laughs> but now I'm a dis the disciple that Jesus loved. And because of that, I can walk with security. I can anchor myself. I don't care what your parents said. I don't care what the world has said. I don't care what people have said about you, how your friends made you feel, how the church made you feel, how your past make you feel. I don't care what you thought about yourself. Once you come to realize that you have value because God loves you, it'll change everything. It'll change every single thing. Now, will you have problems? Yes. Will you have more hurts? Yes. Will you have issues? Yes. We can't remove that. We live in a fallible world, a fallen world because of the sin. And that's not making excuses, but that's just the reality. The, fallen in, in e the fall that took place in the Garden of Eden is hatred, is bitterness, is, is all kinds of things that take place on the earth every day. And it comes from the darndest people. I've come to realize that, you know, most of the time, the, the people that I invest in the most is where I get the appreciation the least. I, I didn't say that in front of everybody, did I? Did, did I say that in front of everybody? Did I, did I say that in front of everybody? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I just had to let it out. It just keep coming. It just keep coming out. It just keep coming out. But they, once I realize that, I can walk okay. I can walk okay. I'm serious. I walk okay. I, man, I, I swear to you, I walk okay because it's like, okay, I can, I can go to sleep at night and have rest because I come to realize that there's different types of love. And the one I want to grab hold of, I don't want to grab hold of the love that, you know, that loves because the object is valuable. People walk through the doors of the well and they're broken people. And we're not going to, and people walk through the doors of our recovery and they're broken people. I walk through places, I'm a broken person, but I thank God that God don't love me based on me because I know that I'm not the type of person that even deserves love. So I don't want to go and live life off of a love that loves because the object is valuable because then who would get love then? Who would get love? The, the, the love I want to go, go off of is the love that loves and it makes the object valuable. And that's the God love. Remember, God doesn't love you because you're worthy. God love makes you worthy. He makes you worthy. That's, that's what happened. God's love is not a love that makes uh, you worthy. It, it, God, God doesn't love you because you're worthy. Excuse me. God's love make you worthy. God doesn't love you because you are worthy. I want you to get that. As you, as you step out, as you walk throughout the day, you make a mistake, you fall into sin, you miss tomorrow. God doesn't love you because you are worthy. God's love make you worthy. And when you walk in that, it gives you an entirely different mindset. Also, I want to leave you with this. God's love is not a love that loves because the object is valuable. God's love gives value to the one he loves. Often in life, we have a mindset like this ducky. This ducky wouldn't have any value at all until someone else brings a love to it. It'll sit on a shelf with the legs just dangling, leaned over, People probably grab it and throw it back, don't want it. People probably grab it and squeeze on it, knock it over. Until someone purchases this ducky. Until someone purchases this ducky and take it home and make it their own. They'll walk around with no value at all. No self-worth. That's the exact same thing. It happens with you and I. Sometimes we're just sitting there on the shelf, just dangling, going through life, being squeezed, squinched, beat up, knocked over, abused, assaulted, 
hurt. And it's until Jesus Christ purchased us with his blood that was shed on Calvary. Until we acknowledge what Jesus Christ did on the cross for you and I, we will not have value. It's, it's the va- and we, won't, we may have the value, but we won't even know we got it. Some of us even today, as believers, and we've accepted Jesus Christ, and we still walk around with low self-esteem. We feel like we're worthless. And Jesus didn't die for you because you were worthless. Jesus did not die for you because you're worthless. That's why I really challenge you to go to Grow Track so you can discover your purpose. Not for you to serve. Please get this. It's not about serving. I wouldn't care if everybody just sat down. Do you understand? We started the church. We didn't have nobody serving. Everybody was just sitting there. Kids in there and everything because all we want to do is add value to and give you the word of God to make sure you know that God loves you, that God cares for you, that God loves you. God. So Grow Track helped you discover your purpose because once you discover your purpose, I want to clear that up because sometimes people think go to Grow Track to serve. No, it's go to Grow Track so you can discover your purpose. And so you go through that and you understand. Now, because I know my purpose, I mean, all hell be breaking loose, but I know my purpose so it stabilizes me. Like everything, when you know your purpose, like it stabilizes it's something about knowing why God created you. It's something about knowing why you're here on earth. Because if not, you would begin to reach for all kind of stuff. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe if I get money. Maybe if I get a car. Maybe if I get, have a kid. Maybe if I start up that business. Maybe if I get this. You know, and you begin to start looking for identity in the wrong places. I thank God. My wife, I married her. She didn't give me identity. And I didn't give her identity. Meaning like I already knew my identity before I met her. She added value to me, but, but it was not about her. And I would thank God it wasn't about me neither for her. And so the reality, and thank God we didn't have kids. We weren't allowed. But the, the reality is, and a child wasn't going to give me work, no purpose. Discover your purpose so you won't have to look for value in anything else. You won't look for value in anything else. Anything else. You won't be searching out to get value for money, for your performance, for that a boy, that a girl, for, for that. You, you won't even be, that, that won't be the thing you'll be looking for value for. You'll know that God's love gives you value. So why does God love you? Why does God love me? Because you're valuable. There's something in you I don't know what it is. I don't. That's the reason why we go mining and diving into a, a, a season of trying to find out, what do you see in me, God? I remember sitting in chairs on my knees crying. I was a drug addict. I was a gang member. I shot people. I mean, I stabbed people. I did all kind of dumb stuff. Kicking in doors, broad daylight, having my whole family jeopardized. Because of my gang activity, people coming by want to shoot up the whole house looking for me because I robbed them, because I'd done something to them. I, and I came in there and I got on my knees and I asked God, like, what in the heck do you really want me for? Like, I, I understood that he wanted me because it, they kept on preaching that God has a purpose for my life. But I was wondering, what the heck do you want me for? Like, really? I don't know nothing. Man, I, man come on, God, are you serious? And when I was on my knees, God said, you know what? And I, now I'm beginning to start pitching out my pedigree. I was a drug addict like God didn't know. <laughs> I was a gang member like God didn't know. I'd hurt people like God didn't know. I started telling him how much education I had like God didn't know. And God began to start telling me, it's not, you have no value separate from me. It's not that you bring anything to the table. Just are you willing to throw up your hands and surrender? And say, God, use me so I can make a difference here on earth. That's all I'm asking you to do. And I begin to start crying and asking God, man, I mean, I don't know what that looked like, but yeah, I guess I will. And oh, I didn't know what that looked like. I didn't know people would stab me in my back. Accusation. Allow me. I didn't know all that, but I, I mean, but, but because I, God spoke to me, I'm like, I'm going to do all that and keep on loving, keep on loving, keep on loving, keep on. Why? Because 
this is what gives me value. Is God's love for me it, while I was yet still a sinner, a drug addict, lost with no hope, no purpose. While I was still like that, he sent his son to die for me. And he did the same thing for each and every person. I don't know, you may not have a background like mine, but everybody got a background. Everybody got something. And God loves you in spite of all that. He don't care what you've done. As a matter of fact, in Romans chapter 8, it, it talks about how there's nothing that can separate you from the love of God. He said, death is a, neither death nor life, neither angels or demons or, or present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, you know, no, nor anything else, all creation. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. There's nothing you can do. There's nothing you do. You can try to run from it. You're still going to be loved. You can try to complain about it. You're still going to get loved. You can feel some type of way about it, but you're still going to get loved. Because while you and I were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Today, if there's anyone that may be battling with where they're at in their walk with the Lord, whether you haven't accepted Jesus or whether you're saved and you just kind of got sidetracked and started stumbling a little bit, or whether you're in a point where you say, man, I know there's more. I know you want me to grow more. I know you want me to take the next steps. I kind of start looking through the lenses of the wrong love. If you're there today, if you're here today, if you're online, put them emoji hands up, prayer hands, and, you know, I want somebody to connect with them online, that's with the team, inbox them. If you feel like you want to talk to someone personally, DM us. But if you're in here, I pray that you, I ask you to bow your head, and if you feel comfortable coming up to the front, getting on your knees, begin to cry, because every time God moved, the devil moved. I come to realize that. God moved my life, then the devil moved. As soon as God do something, then here, here's the devil. And if the prayer team can come up and pray for these individuals, you know, because what we want to do is we want to create a space where we, you and I, us, we come to a place where we accept that God loves us. No matter what we've done, no matter what, no matter what happened in the past, no matter what we've done, we have value because of God's love. God's love is so important. So as you pray, as, as you continue to believe and trust and open up your heart, and let Jesus minister to you. I'm praying that God would do something special. I'm praying that God would open up all of our minds and our hearts to, to his love. To his love for us. He loves us. He loves us. He loves us. And we can't do nothing about it. We can't do nothing about it.